Good evening and welcome to the Coon Rapids City Council meeting for Tuesday, June 18th, 2019. If you could please rise and join us for the pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Can you tell me if Wade was standing in the lobby of that hotel? I'm sure. Okay, all right. Please call the roll. Councilmember Griscovia. Here. Councilmember Kicker. Here. Councilmember Demmer. Sort of here. <laughs> Councilmember Geisler. Here. Councilmember Johnson. Here. Councilmember Wells. Here. Mayor Cook. Here. Thank you. Uh, first item on our agenda then is to adopt this evening's agenda. Mr. Mayor. Council Member uh, Geisler. I'd like to move that we adopt the agenda with one modification that we move the continuation of public hearing, which is item number seven, to after old business, so it's item 10A, or just after item 10. All right. Second. Motion by Geisler, second by Wells, to adopt this evening's agenda with one that one change, moving item seven to follow item 10. Discussion? Hearing none, all in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. And that motion carries. Um, all right. And the very first item then on our new agenda is swearing in of a new police officer. Chief Wise. Mr. Mayor, Council, thank you very much. Um, as always, we like to take the opportunity to introduce to the community our new police officers. Uh, it's an important tradition for us because we very highly value the relationship between the officers and our community and vice versa. Um, that relationship is key to our sense of well-being here in Coon Rapids and um, it's something that we like to do because we like to introduce these faces so that the so that citizens know who their officers are. So in this case tonight, I, it's my pleasure and my um, honor to introduce Officer Ryan Olson. Um, as I always say to you, Ryan is a local guy, which is my personal preference, but Ryan was uh, raised in Andover and graduated from high school there. Um, he was very actively involved in sports while a part of the community there. Um, Ryan Olson developed an inner interest in law enforcement at a very young age, um, likely due to the influence of his father, uh, Detective Sergeant Scott Olson for, with the Minneapolis Police Department. Those uh, family traditions run very strong. Ryan started um, college with a law enforcement career in mind and graduated ultimately from Concordia University in St. Paul with a double major in criminal justice and political science. Um, meanwhile, uh, Ryan self-described um, himself as being actively involved in the community, meaning he wants to be a part of the community that he works for. And this is symbolized by his passion for hockey, um, which actually is near and dear to my heart. I have a son who's in uh, high school hockey. But he has a passion for hockey and likes to teach youngsters how to succeed and be successful and grow um, through that sport. And uh, frankly, my opinion is, is that um, young people like that, that do have that interest, that want to be involved in their community, that do want to help young people grow, are a perfect fit for law enforcement and is a good, um, good fit for us here in Coon Rapids. So now we're very happy to have Ryan as a member of our police, uh, police department. Ryan's first day as a trainee was March 24th, 2019. And since that time, he's been trained and evaluated on a daily basis. And I always talk about our field training program. It's hard. Uh, it's designed to be hard on purpose. We push the young officers hard to make um, good decisions in tough situations and to always act in the best interests of our city. Um, it's an extremely stressful process to be certain we've hired the right people. And in Ryan, we certainly believe we have hired the right person, which leads us to where we are now. So Ryan, to you. Tonight, we are, you are officially graduating from our field training program. Symbolically, we removed your trainee badge, and you have now earned your permanent badge, which is number 164. Um, and I want to say two things about this badge. First, uh, it symbolizes two things. The faith that the, your peers and coworkers have in you that you're gonna be a good officer and you're gonna serve the citizens of our city. Second, and probably more importantly, is that never forget that it's a citizen's badge. They're entrusting you with it and always honor that badge and do the right thing for our community. You become a member of a proud organization of dedicated professionals on behalf of that organization. I welcome you into our police department family. 
Know that your peers and colleagues, including me, will do everything we can to help you be successful as you move forward in your career. So the badge now needs to get pinned onto his chest, and that honor, and I'm sure it's a special honor for his dad, uh, belongs to um, Detective Sergeant Scott Olson of the Minneapolis Police Department. So Scott, I'll have you step to the middle here. I, Ryan Olson, do solemnly swear that I will support the Constitution of the United States, that I will support the Constitution of the United States, and the Constitution of the State of Minnesota, and the Constitution of the State of Minnesota, and discharge faithfully, and discharge faithfully, the duties of a police officer for the city of Coon Rapids, the duties of a police officer for the city of Coon Rapids, in the county of Anoka and the state of Minnesota, and the county of Anoka and the state of Minnesota, to the best of my judgment and ability. To the best of my judgment and ability. Congratulations, Ryan. Thank you. Thank you guys. Thanks, for, thanks for your family for coming, your friends. All right, next on our agenda is the approval of the minutes of the previous meeting. So moved. Motion by Wells, second by Griscoviak. Any, uh, uh, you know, discussion? <laughs> Corrections? Hearing none, all in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? And the minutes are approved for the June 4th, 2019 meeting. Uh, we have one, two, three, four items on our consent agenda this evening. And if you are following along with the agenda, the first item on our consent agenda is agenda item three. And that's to adopt resolution 19-61, amending the budget for a dishwasher um, we're looking at the 2019 uh, modification to the 2019 facility construction fund budget to allow for the purchase and installation of a new commercial dishwasher for the Civic Center in the amount of $10,550. The existing dishwasher is broken and is not repairable. The funds are available in the fund balance of the facility construction fund. So we're looking at authorizing resolution 19-61, amending the 2019 facility construction fund budget for the purchase of a commercial dishwasher for the Civic Center. Item four um, is a, accept a right of entry agreement with JSN Properties LLC. JSN Properties LLC received site plan approval for the construction of an 85,500 square foot office warehouse facility which is to be located at 11201 Exion Street. The right of entry agreement allows the city to periodically enter the property to exercise hydrants and valves, flush the water main system, and inspect a 72 inch diameter culvert. The utility and drainage system within the site are considered private, and the property owner will continue to own and maintain these items. This right of entry agreement simply provides the city the ability to ensure appropriate fire protection and drainage conveyance. Um, this must be the property that everybody keeps asking about that we've never seen as a council because it was a completely authorized construction. 
right along Highway 10 next to USF Holland. This must be the old Shamrock property. Is that the case? Anybody know? Grant? No, I'm getting nods. Okay. Yeah. They're so shocked that I didn't know what was going in. It's like, well, we, they wouldn't bring it to us if it's already an authorized use. Um, all right, so what we're looking at doing is uh, to accept the attached right of entry agreement with JSN Properties LLC for its new office warehouse facility at 11201 Exeon Street. Um, item five is to approve a master contracting agreement for citywide electrical repairs. And this is just to formalize the city's ongoing relationships with contractors. A master contracting agreement has been prepared to provide consistency in the approach to resolve needed repairs, speed up the process to ensure items are addressed in a timely manner, and allow staff to better manage services provided. So with this, we'll be approving a master contracting agreement with Aid Electric Corporation and Stymie Electric Incorporated and authorize city officials to execute the attached agreements for professional contracting services. Item six, which is our fourth and final item on our consent agenda, is to uh, adopt resolution 19-65, declaring participation with the Council on Local Results and Innovations <clears throat> State Performance Measurement Program. Um, the uh, Cities that choose to participate in the program in 2019 are eligible for a reimbursement of 14 cents per capita from the state, approximately $8,900. And in order to participate this year, the city must file a report with the, with the Office of the State Auditor by July 1st. This report must include a resolution that commits the city to, to developing a performance measurement system and providing data for a minimum of 10 performance measures that have been established by the CLRI. The city has developed the materials necessary to participate in the program for 2019, um, and we have been participating since 2010. If the city's participation is approved by council, staff will submit data for the 2018 measures and the attached resolution to the Office of the State Auditor. The city will also report the data on the city website in order to comply with an additional program requirement. Um, so we'll, with this, we will be adopting resolution 19-65, declaring the city's participation with the Council on Local Results and Innovations Performance Measures Program for 2019. And that should be the full consent agenda. Council Member Kicker. I make a motion that we approve the consent agenda. Second. Motion by Kicker, second by Johnson. Any discussion or questions? Council Member Kicker. Um, I just had a question about the JSN properties. It, it's a uh, office slash warehouse, 8,500 or 85,000 square feet. Is there any breakout between how many office, how much, you know, what, what the division is between office and warehouse? Um, I, I looked and I did, I couldn't find any. Yeah, Mayor, Councilman Kicker. At this point, there isn't. Um, the developer of the property will occupy a portion of the site of the building, and they'll be leasing out. Uh, the remainder to different tenants. At this point, we don't know who those tenants will be. Okay. All right. Any other questions or discussion on this? Mayor. Council Member Gaskoviak. I just had a question on Resolution 1961, amending the budget. I know that our Civic Center needs this product, but a uh, question for the Finance Director. Do we utilize a state contract for something like this, or do we go <coughs> to bids? It's a fairly sizable expenditure, I'm just wondering. Tim, do you know when we got the dishwasher? Um, we do use Councilmember Skobiak, we do use the state bid. We received three separate quotes for this, and this was the best one received. Okay, thank you. I was pleasantly surprised it was only over ten thousand. <laughs> I mean, after all the equipment we buy up at the restaurant, you're going, "Oh my gosh, this stuff is expensive." <laughs> well, then it is a calculation too. The last one lasted twenty-three years. So I think we did pretty good. Good run. Yeah. Pretty good. Yeah. Good run. Yeah, well, our city attorney's been down there doing it by hand now for the last, what, six weeks? So, no. And it is hourly rate. That's <laughs> all right, any other discussion or questions? All right, hearing none, all in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? I think you must have anticipated that vote, Wade. You were right in there with us. Nice. I'm trying my best. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Uh, we are up to uh, item 8 because we have moved item 7 to follow 10 and item 
eight under bid openings and contract awards is to consider resolution number 19-9 sub 9, awarding a contract for the Erlinson Pedestrian Bridge and Dahlia Park culvert <coughs> installation. Um, Mr. Hammer, is there anything that you wanted to cover on this? I can, I can just, I'll read the, the proposed improvements um, are comprised of the following trail projects. In Erlinson Park, we're looking at re replacing the pedestrian bridge and in Dahlia Park, we're removing the existing narrow pedestrian bridge and installing two culverts in place of the bridge and then realigning the trail crossing. Um, and this is our first time working with Blackstone contractors then? Here in the city, yes. They've, they've applied many times and, and tried to get the bids, and this is the first time they were successful. Okay. Good things on the references, though. Okay. Excellent. Council? Council Member Geisler? I'll make a motion um, to adopt resolution 19 9 sub 9, awarding a contract to Blackstone Contractors LLC in the amount of $164,845 for the Erlinson Park Pedestrian Bridge and Dahlia Park Culvert installations. Second. Motion by Geisler, second by Kicker. Any discussion? Mayor? Council Member Guskoviak? Question for Mr. Himmer. I actually went through this park uh, with the Parks Commission, and they mentioned that that trail kind of is on private property. Is that what you describe as a trail realignment? Are we moving away from that? Are we going to be okay? Well, Councilmember Guskoviak, there's, <clears throat> without doing some detailed surveys and registered land surveys, it's it's iffy. So okay. we're gonna we're gonna take some of the kinks out and make sure that that's not a question anymore. Okay. Just want to make sure that was addressed. Was a question about from the parks department. Oh, I thought the realignment of the trail crossing was in Dahlia Park. Did we, I say Erlinson? Yes, I meant Dahlia. Oh, all right, okay, good. As did I. Okay. okay. <laughs> <laughs> I have it right up here, and I said it wrong. Okay. Nope. Okay. Nope. All right. Nope. That's all Thanks good then. I would just good clarification. All right. Um, any other discussion? Hearing none. All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? And that motion carries. And that work will start after they run the firecracker 5K through there? That is correct. All right. Um, under old business, um, number nine, in planning case 19-5, consider a preliminary and final site plan for 168-unit apartment, Springbrook Drive, and 94th Avenue real estate equities. Mr. Mayor? Council Member Geisler? Do we have to take this off the table first? Okay. So move to take it off the table. Second. Okay. Motion by Geisler and a second by Johnson to remove planning case 19 dash five. Where, where, where am I at? No, plastic 19 dash five um, from the um, from the table. And. I'm, I'm, does that also include 19-4 and 19-5? Can, can we do all of the table items at once? Okay, so yeah, amend the motion to be 19-5, um, the preliminary and final site plan, 19-4, the preliminary plat and resolution, and the public hearing, which is 19-58. I'll reaffirm my second. Okay, so we have a motion and a second to remove those three items from the table for this week. Is there any dis do we discussion that? We don't discussion no. taking them off the no, table. Sure. I know we don't discuss putting them on the table. All right. Or okay, all right. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? And that those have been removed from the table. And we are addressing planning case 19-5, consider preliminary and final site plan for 168-unit apartment, Springbrook Drive and 94th Avenue, real estate equities. Um, I guess what I would like to do is, Mr. Harlicker, you're going to do a presentation on kind of the, the changes, I would imagine. Correct, Mayor. Um, and then <clears throat> I would like the, uh, the, the developers to, to whatever they're going to do. Yep. And then I'd like council to, to kind of go through the questions that we've already established and worked out. But then I would like to have just a few minutes where we can have, if there's folks here to speak to the project, I'd like to give them a few minutes because this does represent a little bit of a change from the original project, just like three minutes each or something. 
But uh, yeah, we can do that, right? Wait, for protocol or two or meeting? Okay. I don't, yeah, I mean, I guess I, just because this, this is a little bit of a change from the, from before, and the fact that, and I, and I know there was some confusion at the last meeting, um, that they thought that they would have a voice, that there'd be a public hearing that night. I went back and watched the, the planning commission meeting, and he said the same thing he always says. This will be heard by the council on June 4th. I could see where that might be construed as, we're going to have another. We're going to have another run at this, but it really that isn't what it means. It means the council will hear the item, um, but in this case, this evening, because the neighbors are, are here, I would like to have them just take a few minutes and, okay. if they have, as, you know, particularly after they see the new proposal, after they hear some of the points that we've already worked out, and see if they still have additional concerns. I guess. Okay. Okay. There we go. Uh, right. Mayor and council members. Uh, a brief overview of the changes that have occurred since uh, the June 4th meeting. Um, this is the site outlined here, the southwest quadrant of the 61047 interchange, um, right here with Springbrook Drive coming up, 94th Avenue here. Um, this is the site um, outlined in black. Um, what was reviewed by the uh, council uh, at the June 4th meeting is this component of, of the plan, 168 units, 285 parking stalls, um, came in with a density of 38.1 units per acre and 1.7 uh, space, parking spaces per unit. Um, council and the residents, the, the primary concern seemed to be the density and um, the ratio of uh, parking spaces uh, to units. Um, after a, a very thorough discussion um, council tabled um, the item and, and requested that the applicant uh, look into possible modifications to the site to address the issues uh, surrounding density and uh, number of parking stalls. Um, following that meeting, uh, they were approached by the uh, property owner to the west here at 201 94th uh, Avenue about the possible purchase of their property and adding it to the prop, adding it to the project. Um, that's this component right here. Um, what is being proposed now is uh, the modification to include this area here as proof of parking um, with access from the, the proposed parking, or the proposed drive aisle here. There will be no new, new access out on the 94th. Uh, they'll be utilizing the currently proposed uh, driveway. Um, this is a, a closer up view of this, uh, what we're calling proof of parking. Um, it can accommodate uh, 68 stalls based on this drawing um, with access out at this point here. Um, during the course of the discussion, um, what uh, was uh, discussed was having this as what's labeled here proof of parking. Um, should parking become an issue at some point in the future, um, city would require that this uh, site be developed for parking. Um, it would go through uh, the normal uh, site plan review process and um, go through the uh, planning commission and uh, gain all the appropriate approvals. Um, by adding this uh, parcel uh, to the project, um, it reduces the density down to 32.94 or 84 units per acre and increases the, the parking ratio to 2.09 uh, spaces per unit. Mr. Herlicker, in this picture it still shows the vinyl fence running between the parking lot and the other property. And wouldn't that fence now go around that property? That would be something that we would look at as part of the formal site plan review process, uh, landscaping and screening around the perimeter of, of the site. Um, they're proposing to install it here now because at this point, um, this property here is not being uh, proposed to be developed. Uh, modifications uh, could be included as, as part of that uh, formal review process. 
So how, how would that, and maybe there's a time for this later, but so how, how would that look then? Because if they're proposing to make this basically mowed part of the green space, mm -hmm. now all of a sudden you the, the folks in the home right next to that then potentially have, this is a new play yard for the apartment building then. Right. You know, so it, this that is going to impact their their home. Um, that could be a requirement, uh, Mayor, that this fence maybe end here. Um, I'll have to let the applicant address that. I don't know. There okay. is a retaining wall uh, along this property line. At some point, it drops down where it's not needed anymore. I'm not sure where that point is uh, along here, but you might want a fence along there to ensure uh, safety along the retaining wall. Thank you. Um, as part of the, uh, the conditions uh, for this new uh, revised plan, um, staff is proposing the uh, following uh, conditions should uh, council find this option acceptable. Uh, one is the developer must complete acquisition of 201 94th Avenue prior to the issuance of uh, building permits. Number two, the land at 201 94th Animal <coughs> Avenue will be considered as proof of parking for the property referenced in planning case 19-5. Uh, prior to the construction of the additional parking, developer shall prepare a site plan and submit an application according to city code. City reserves the right to issue a notice to the developer to construct additional parking at such time the city deems it necessary and the property at 201 94th Avenue, Avenue be combined with the project site. Um, I think the, the last condition is, is, is really critical for the city is that that provides the city the ability to require that uh, this parking be installed at a time that the city deems it necessary. And it will be a condition of uh, site plan approval. So if there is a, a disagreement as to whether that's going to be installed, um, if it's not installed, it will, the developer will be in violation of their site plan approval. With that, I'll, I'll answer questions. And again, the developers here to speak to the council and the, and the audience. And when, and when you say they would be in violation of their site plan approval, um, what we discussed in the, also in the workshop was that would impact, it'll be written into their TIF documents that they would lose their TIF on it. And they potentially could lose their rental license because they have to be in compliance with all of Title 11, Title 11, 11. Chapter 11. Until yep. such time as they came into compliance. Right, yeah. until they came into compliance, right. Yep. So, okay. Right. Um, questions for Mr. Harlicker? Uh, Mr. Mayor? So, so maybe the question, so at a certain point, obviously, if we would issue a notice, do we have any expectation, you know, obviously if you say, Oh, I think we need the parking. We have to give a reasonable amount of time for it to actually be constructed, and that will all be part of that negotiation and what that um, notice would be. You know that there's an acceptable duration of time because I wouldn't want to have somebody say, "Oh, we need parking," and then you're in violation tomorrow, right? Because you, you need time to be able to build it. Does that make sense? I, yeah. I mean, I guess I would. I would like to see them actually already kind of have this worked out because if we say the parking is triggered then you're gonna to have to get them to cooperate in a timely manner to come through the planning commission and to deal with you on all of these things I would rather have that worked out in advance that this is what it would look like if parking is triggered so everybody already knows what it's going to look like um, is that possible or well, one of the issues, then you're asking that, well, they should go through formal site plan review prior to them actually needing the, the parking. That's, I'm, that's what I'm hearing. Well, yeah, I guess, I guess I'm just. That? Can you do that? Well, it, it doesn't quite make sense because the question would be is, you know, maybe, so this is what I think, what, 66? 66. 66. 66. So if they only need 30, the site plan would already be approved for 60. And, and so to me, all it, I want to trigger is that at that notice, you know, that it's is time frame. here is your ex, our expectation of you'll have a site plan by X date, you will then be into that process and that 
that we trigger that initiation of that site plan and a review of what is appropriate for it to be done. So I don't want to approve or have planning approve a site plan on something that is hypothetical. That just doesn't quite make sense. But I do think it makes sense that if we are saying we reserve the right to issue the notice, we should have some expectation of the speed of response. And I just wanted that to be included in that agreement. Yep. Uh, Mayor and, and council members, the other thing, there's a timing issue if um, by approving the uh, formal site plan prior to construction, site plans are only valid for one year with a possible one year extension. Okay. So there's, there's a, a possibility that the site plan will become null and void after, after two years. Uh, yeah, uh, Mayor, Council, Patrick Oster with Real Estate Equities. I, I was going to suggest uh, something similar to what Councilmember Geisler said, that if it gets triggered, then perhaps you must submit site plan within 90 days of notice or something along those lines to start that process. I think that could be um, a reasonable accommodation. So. Patrick, as long as you're up here, yep. um, do you know what that line would look like? Um, we've got that proposed proof of parking. We've got that vinyl sense or vinyl fence. Um, next to the parking, do you, do you know, what, what's that lot going to look like? Yeah, so Mayor, there is a retaining wall with a fence proposed above that currently. We would, we would be fine adding a fence along the north and west of the additional lot too, um, to kind of incorporate that and, and um, set it off and create a buffer from the other properties too, so. My phone? I think it's back there. Yep. Oh, all right. Sorry. <laughs> Did you have my phone vibrating somewhere? Um, and and that wouldn't that wouldn't create any kind of an attractive nuisance to have a, a fenced in area like that on a wooded lot. Um, I was really I was really excited with the potential of this being being a parking lot. Um, struggling with what it'll be in the interim and, and how that'll impact the area. But or Mr. Yeah. Mayor, I mean, if, if a fence at this time isn't maybe appropriate, maybe we could do plantings along the, along the rather than a fence, do some plantings along the um, property line. So, you know, they're starting out now, but if in five years we had to add a parking lot, then the trees would have time to have matured and create more of a natural buffer too, rather than having a fence stand alone. I mean, that could be an option too that, if it became an issue, then the trees sure. would at least have time to mature by then. Councilmember Johnson. Thank you, Your Honor. Um, first of all, I want to uh, thank the people in the neighborhood who <clears throat> stayed late following our last meeting to talk to me about their concerns. I have read through um, all of their prepared statements because they did come to the last meeting with prepared statements. I also want to thank the mayor for stopping into that meeting for a period of time and, and listening to some of them um, as well. Um, I've heard from uh, many different people from this neighborhood of varied different perspectives. Some of them would like it to remain, the entire property to remain a green space. One raised the idea of it being a nature preserve. One person raised the idea of um, the saying, I think an apartment building makes good sense there, but they didn't like the densities. Another person raised the idea of saying, I like the apartment building there, but I think the rents are too high for the neighborhood. Um, uh, the landowner um, who has the abutting property and I have had some conversations um, and, uh, and he um, has uh, tendered up his property to uh, engage in discussions with uh, the developer as a possible buffer for the neighborhood. People have been collaborating on this with various different ideas of how this would look, but one of the things that I kept hearing from people, at least in the short term, is, is that they would like there to be the flexibility for additional parking and the flexibility for additional green space. So that addresses your honor's um, concern as it would remain green space right now. Um, 
I have thought about this a lot. Some of the people in the neighborhood are concerned about the increased traffic on 94th Avenue mm -hmm. that's going to come in and out of the neighborhood. We heard from staff about their communications with Metro Transit and how there is an express bus within 900 feet from here and there are is the possibility for ongoing discussions with Metro Transit in the future if needs arise and, and development occurs uh, for both business and uh, residential in the surrounding area and the numbers support um, increased routes or increased uh, stops. So I'm satisfied that the city has been responsive to the questions that were raised at the last meeting. I'm frankly very impressed with how the neighbors have worked with the developer and how the developer has worked to be responsive to the request for decreasing the densities by adding additional property and decreasing, or excuse me, increasing the parking ratios so that there is the potential for future build out should there be um, issues that the city identifies down the road. Um, I candidly can't remember in my last four and a half years or so on this council, a developer that has been so responsive in altering their project, not just through one planning commission meeting, but through a second one to really address the needs of the city and the concerns of the city council. And, and to be perfectly candid about it, I think that speaks well for them as a future partner in the city. Um, I want people to know that, um, and I want staff to know that um, I appreciate all of their hard work on it. I think we have to remain vigilant about the traffic counts and whether any improvements need to be made for sidewalks and streets in the surrounding area and to just bring those to council if this is approved. Um, I have done a bit of a cost benefit analysis and I've been listening to everybody and I've been getting a lot of emails. Um, but in that cost benefit analysis, I think this, and I indicated this at the last meeting, I think it's going to be an attractive and positive project in the community. And I think uh, this developer has proven through all of this that they have the potential to be a very good partner. Um, when I do that cost benefit analysis, I, I like, um, how responsive the developer has been. And so um, I would encourage other council members to consider or reconsider all of that effort on their part and consider supporting uh, this project moving forward. And we will consider um, or we will be attentive to issues that might arise in the neighborhood. One of the things that came up that I did want to bring just to staff's attention is Many of the driveways in the neighborhood are configured so that people back out onto 94th Avenue. And so if people come in and uh, have reasonable requests for doing something like creating a turnaround area in their driveway so they can drive out facing front, I would, if that requires any kind of variance to allow that, I would encourage staff to work with them first and then if a variance is needed to come because this is going to be a significant change in their neighborhood. But by adding this additional property, there's going to be a big buffer there and future allowances. That's all I have. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Mayor, Mr. Uh, maybe I can address Council Member Johnson's questions. Uh, typically, we are able to accommodate turnarounds like that through the um, driveway with requirements. They do require a, a driveway permit, but typically we're able to accommodate that through the normal review process. And I'd just like to touch on a couple points, how this property will be used in the, in the near and, and medium term, I guess. The applicant will be demolishing the house um, once the um, current property owner uh, relocates, and then they'll be reestablishing the turf and it'll be left as green space. There won't be a structure there or anything until the need for uh, additional parking arises. If I might, I just want to add one other thing, Your Honor. Councilor Johnson. So 
Hey, this is just throwing an idea out there, um, but I did speak briefly with Mr. Stemwettle about this. One of the things that people in the neighborhood have said is, look, they, they would like there to be some, because there are anticipated to be children there, some kind of park space uh, in this immediate neighborhood. And while there's not any formal park space, um, there is this green space that's going in. I don't know what the limits and requirements are with the city repurposing some of its retired playground equipment. Um, but if that is a possibility and the developer is interested as we phase out things and move them into other things for there to be some kind of a, a purchase or whatever of that, or at least make it available, um, you know, I would encourage staff to think creativity, creatively about uh, that issue. And maybe the developer will even come up with its own ideas as it gets demand from people who move into the development. So I just want people to think creatively about uh, the concerns that the neighbors have. Okay. Anybody else? Questions? All right. Um, so with that, then, why don't we open this up? Um, if any of the neighbors would like to speak, We'll limit this to, uh, to three minutes each. But if, if anybody, does anybody here want to address council on this? I guess I'm not even sure who might be here from the neighborhood, but. If you just give us your name and address when you get to the handbook. Thank you. My name is Lila Sanderson. I live at 224 94th Avenue Northwest. I and many of our neighbors were more prepared to speak at the last meeting and we were kind of disappointed and disillusioned that we didn't have the opportunity to do that. Now we have, the individuals have chosen really not to attend tonight for various reasons, some with other commitments and some just feeling that it's, it's really past the point that so much has happened behind the scenes that, that uh, we really can't influence the, the decision that might be that be, might be made tonight. Um, some of the things that concerned me that was we weren't brought into this discussion earlier. If, if this development was being brought to the city a year ago and we just heard about this in May, I'm, I'm guess it would have been nice to been part of the part of the decision making and part of the planning and part of just knowing what was anticipated long before this. And then it also would have been nice to have been been given a better model of what the project would look like. I mean to see it sketched out on a hunk of paper sitting in row number six back there, um, you really can visualize the magnitude of the development, the size of it all and how it's good to look. It would have been nice to have seen a, a scale model or, or some such thing in the days of technology. Maybe that's kind of antiquated, but, but something to, um, to produce a better picture of what this might look like. So we've got a few disappointed people in our neighborhood that um, are going to be, um, again, disappointed if, if the project proceeds as, as planned. <laughs> It means, means uh, major changes for especially some of the women property owners. And another thing that I would like to have seen, I've heard about the traffic plan numerous times. I don't know what a traffic plan looks like. I almost thought we should order our own. But um, we hear about it, and what does that mean exactly? I'm not quite sure. Another issue, <clears throat> and then I'll, I'll stop, is that there seems to be so many levels of, of government here. We're talking about there's community development, there's a planning commission, there's a city council. It beats, leaves, leaves someone just a little bit bewildered about where they go to be heard. And um, with that, I thank very much all the council members that did take time to read all our emails and uh, some were immediately responsive. Some took a little more time, but um, it's good to know that you do read them and that we know where to go for next time should we need your attention. Thank you. Thank you, Mrs. Anderson. Thank you. 
Would anybody like would anybody else like to address council this evening on this project? All right, so then we will go back to comments from the council. Mr. Mayor? This, uh, council Member Geisler? Uh, I want to reiterate a number of the different things that Council Member Johnson talked about. I mean, um, at our last meeting, I think it was clear that I was supportive of this project. Um, it is uh, zoned in high density. It is something that, you know, we look for and we're guiding in that parcel to be done within the city. Um, as Commission Council Member Johnson talked about, the developer has been incredibly responsive, you know, and so in addition, you know, the additional parking and proof of parking can be there to make it, you know, over two stalls per unit when their lease is limited to two stalls, you know, so there, you know, we've addressed the parking issue. There's going to be some green space because likely we won't need all of that parking. And so there's additional green space that would be there. There's just that unique, you know, approach to how can we work with the community to get to um, a, a good solution. Um, and so with that, I'm going to again make a motion in planning case 19-5 to recommend the council approve the preliminary and final site plan for the apartment building. So we have seven stated conditions to begin with, with um, one through seven. We have eight through 12, which are the additional um, conditions that Mr. Harlicker talked about, um, as well as the findings um, offered for use flexibility for the site as stated in the plan. And I will second that. Do you need more details, Mr. Attorney? So when you said use, you also meant and design flexibility. Use and design flexibility, sorry. Yes, yes, there are two sections. And I'll reaffirm my second. So we have a motion by Geisler and a second by Johnson. I'm really appreciative of everything that the developer has done to change this. I like the project. I think the devil's in the details with that lot right now um, because what we're, what, what's being proposed doesn't deal with what that lot is going to look like once the home is gone and, and if that's going to be green space. Um, I, I, just, I just know that the apartment buildings on my street had to be completely fenced because all of a sudden people are just showing up in people's yards. Mm -hmm. um, so I, that's that's still my concern with that. I think that they have dealt somewhat with the density to the to the neighbors' concerns about density. It is zoned high density. If you could take out the setbacks on the current lot, you'd still be at 140 units. It's still a lot of apartments. Um, I don't know that. Um, that, that any number there would be um, would be real palatable for the neighbors, but that is what the zoning is. Um, I'm not as concerned with the traffic as the neighbors are. I'm concerned. I think what's going to happen is they're going to look up, and if this, the lights backed up on Springbrook Drive, you know, there's going to be cars that are going to make that right down 94th and cut out on Flintwood so they avoid the light. Um, but like I say, I've got over 200 units on my street, and I go by them all the time. I hardly ever see cars moving. They're just, you know, they're. I don't know. I don't. I don't know why that is. But, but I guess when I think about the hundreds of homes around me, the, the cars, the, the, there's, there's just not this steady stream of cars. Um, I'm still very concerned about that lot, though. So that's kind of. I'll stop my comments there and listen to the rest of the council. Mayor. Or not. Councilor Burgess Goviak. <laughs> I will add. I mean, I think we all understand that the developer here has been good about design flexibility, coming back, uh, hearing the concerns of the residents, the planning commission, our own council. I do applaud that. I do, I mean, the, the, the concerns that I had on June 4th actually still remain. I think you definitely uh, addressed the parking concern. I am a little concerned that that lot, what is that lot going to be like, as the mayor's concerned are? I, I do still have, uh, as I mentioned in the work session, a concern over the density. You've been very flexible on everything else, but the density is still over our city code. I think our city code is uh, put in place uh, for good reasons, and, and we're still over that on this. Uh, 
the, also the lack of a playground or public infrastructure is something that I think needs to be addressed. We've had other developments come into our city where they put in playgrounds and basketball courts and things like this, and, and we're not seeing any of that, and it's a bit of a ways from a, uh, from a park. And then, and then lastly, uh, the resident feedback that I've received from the beginning until now is, uh, is not in favor of the project. And I do understand that it is zoned for high density. This just seems a little bit higher density than I'd like to see here. So I, I, you've alleviated some concerns, but not all of them. I'll just leave it at that. Okay. Say your honor. Council Member Demmer. So cut me off if this is really garbled. No, it's, it's you're uh, coming good. through clear. Good. And you're so looking good. I just wanted, yeah, <laughs> fantastic. Um, so I did want to just address the neighbor's concerns. Um, certainly we've gotten a lot of feedback and, you know, it's, it's not a surprise to anybody on the council that any neighborhood would not love a large change like an apartment building coming in. And I want everyone to know that we, we do read these, we do take them seriously and it, it is always a hard decision. Um, the place I'm landing is I, I really do believe that what's being offered uh, for the people in this income bracket is better than anything else they can get in Coon Rapids. And so, uh, you know, there's a couple hundred people whose quality of life improves if we approve this. Um, the downside, of course, being it, it does appear that it may be at the expense of some of the people who already live there, and that's, that's what makes these hard. But, um, if this quality of the apartment was far below what was already in Coon Rapids, I think this decision is an easy no. Uh, but where it's at, um, it, it is going to make things better for a lot of people. So it's it's a hard decision taking the input from the neighbors, but uh, the other people who get the quality of life improvement factor in as well. And so that's that's sort of where I'm landing. All right. That's very briefly, Your Honor. Council Member Johnson. Thank you, Your Honor. Um, I just want to thank the neighbors uh, in that neighborhood for sharing their thoughts with the council. Um, and I'm sitting here and I have in front of me these prepared statements that were handed to me after the last council meeting and to Jess and Carol who came to speak on her son-in-law Paul's behalf and to Brendan and to others. Um, you know. I hope that you can see from your input that the council listened and then communicated with the developer in an effort to address some of the concerns that were raised. It didn't stop the project from my standpoint or isn't going to stop my vote in favor of it, but we were then able to engage with the developer, engage with the city staff, all of whom took those concerns to heart to make some meaningful changes to the project to uh, address those concerns. So from my standpoint, um, there has been an improvement made, significant improvements made, not only to density, but also to the buffer zone that's there and to the potential for future parking that is directly because of citizen input. So that's all I want to say. Thank you to uh, the members of the community who did share their thoughts with the council, um, both by email, by letter, and in person. Thank you. Mr. Harlicker, is there anything that we can do with that lot? I mean, so, so right now, if this goes the way it is, if this goes through the way it, with the conditions that are in there, What's that lot gonna What's that lot gonna look like? Is it gonna be fenced? Is it not gonna be fenced? Is it going to be mowed and part of their green space to play in? I'm i just really I don't understand that lot. Uh, Mayor and Council Members, at this point I'm trying to get a it's right here. Uh, I'm I think it'll be out, and I'll let the applicant address this uh, more fully. Um, open green space. Um, They'll, they'll tear down the house, they'll establish turf so there's, and, and maintain it as, as uh, 
open green space. So like, like a like a yard. So based on the way this is the motion in the second right now, if this passes, there won't be any requirements for any further other than the house has to be raised and they ha it has to um, be mowed and things to comply with city code. Um, that's that's all there is. Correct. Okay. I mean, it, it it doesn't mean that at some point, you know, property owners are always able to you know install up to a seven foot high fence uh, without a permit. Um, that would apply on this property also. Um, if 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 that's something that that is required or they decide to do. You don't need a building permit to put a fence up? Uh, no no permits are required for uh, residential fences. Wow, I didn't know that. Hmm. Right. And the maximum height would be seven feet. Okay. Uh, Mr. Mayor, if I may. Um, I mean, it is our full intention. Right? Yeah, there are no conditions on that specific site, but we are viewing this as an extension of our property. We take pride in the properties that we develop and own. We own them for an extended period of time. so we're not going to maintain the main portion of the site really well and then let this little arm kind of just you know fall apart i mean oh, and i'm not yeah. I, i'm not saying you're implying that i'm just no. saying right now it's not fully planned on exactly yeah, what it's going to be but we plan to raise the house you know there are trees on the site we would like to clear some to make it an open green space now i know there are tree removal and replanting ordinances mm -hmm. that we'll have to get through some of those details which we haven't had all the time to get into all that detail at the moment right now the focus was making it available in the future for parking until that time comes we do tend to see this as an additional amenity outdoor amenity for our residents so we have every intention of maintaining that and finding a, a useful use for it in the meantime until parking comes Okay, further discussion? All right. um, so we have a motion and a second. Um, all in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? No. 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 Motion passes. Three opposed, Mayor Cook, Council Member Kicker, and Council Member Guskoviak. And we are on to Item 10, uh, Planning Case 19-4, consider approval of a preliminary plat and resolution 19-57, granting a final plat, Port Evergreen Apartments. Mr. Mayor. Council Member Geisler. Um, platting is just the legal descriptions of, of the land. And so in Planning Case 19-4, I will recommend approval of the preliminary plat and approval of resolution 19-57, granting final plat approval for Port Evergreen based on the findings that the proposed plat complies with the lot dimensions of the Port District and meets the city's subdivision requirements with four stated conditions, compliance with Title 11 of City Code of Coon Rapids, park dedication for the lot shall be paid prior to releasing building permits and will be based on the number of units in the apartment building, all comments from the city engineer be addressed, and all comments from MnDOT be addressed. I will second that. Motion by Geisler, second by Johnson, and nothing on that has to be changed because of with the addition of extra this land. Okay. Discussion? Mayor? Council yeah. To that point, this is a preliminary and final plat um, approval. When would the other lot, when it joins, will there be another process for approval then? Um, Mayor and, and Council Member, member Gaskoviak, it would not require replatting it um, there is an administrative process where lots can be combined with other lots without going through the platting process okay all right all right we have a motion and a second any other discussion hearing none all in favor signify by saying aye aye, aye. aye. opposed no um, that motion carries to oppose council members Griskoviak and kicker we are on to item 10a um, which is actually item was item seven. Consider resolution 19-58, real estate equities, housing revenue bonds. Um, and this will need to conduct a public hearing. Is there anything that you want to present before we open the public hearing on this? It's already open and we've taken it from the table, right? 
Yeah, we pulled that from the table. Okay. Uh, Mr. Mayor, Council, this really relates to the conduit financing that the developer will use to uh, help pay for the project, which is a uh, housing revenue bond. So it's similar to what we did with the uh, Galway Place project. Okay. So with that, we will open the public hearing or continue reopen, yep. continue. <laughs> Um, in case anybody would like to address council on the financing, the housing revenue bonds. Uh, if anybody wants to address council on the housing revenue bonds for this project, hearing none, we will close the public hearing and reserve council. Okay, Mr. Mayor, I will Mr. make Gasser. a motion to adopt resolution 19-58 related to the issuance of conduit revenue bonds to Coon Rapids AH1 LLP for a multifamily rental housing development. Second. Motion by Geisler, second by Johnson. Any discussion? Mr. Mayor. Council Member Griskoviak. Question for our council. Is this just a standard uh, majority vote here? Do we need a super majority for this? Standard majority, standard majority vote? Okay. Any other discussion? Hearing none, all in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? No. No. Motion carries. Council members um, Griskoviak, Kicker, and Mayor Cook opposed. And we are on to item 11 under new business. Consider resolution 19-62 authorizing an application for economic development funding for RMS Company. Uh, Mr. Fernelius or Mr. Brown? Mr. Brown will handle this. Yeah. Right. Your Honor, members of the Council, uh, RMS Company, of course the city's largest private employer, is proposing an addition. They just completed a, a similar addition a few years ago and are continuing to need additional space. They want to uh, expand their production, add employees. So we're taking the first step in asking you to um, approve a resolution in support of an application for state assistance with this project. So this would be an application to uh, the Minnesota Job Creation Fund, which is a, a different source of funding than we use for the previous expansion. Uh, this is really the first step in the project. We'll have more details about um, the extent of the project soon and uh, provided an award is made. We have also haven't uh, completely uh, settled on uh, whether or not there will be a local uh, funding component of this project as well. So that may be something that will come back to you um, in, in addition. Uh, Lee Zachman, the president of RMS Company, is here this evening. He can answer any questions. I didn't even um, realize you were there amongst everybody. <laughs> Welcome, Lee. <laughs> so he can uh, provide a brief overview of the project if you'd like. Otherwise, we simply ask that you approve this resolution. As long as he's here. Mr. Zachman. Yeah, thank you, Mayor Cook. Yeah, RMS Company, we're looking to uh, expand uh, again. So this would be the fifth edition since we've moved onto the property in Evergreen Boulevard in 1992. So we're, we're uh, seeking approval of, of uh, state funding and uh, hopefully some local funding. But, um, you know, again, the, the, the business is, is going very well. We provide uh, you know, I just say that the city of Coon Rapids should be very proud to have a, a business like RMS. There's, um, um, it's a, a very high tech, one of the, uh, one of uh, a few really anywhere in the world. And uh, we, we keep continue to bring high tech in. Um, our, our company has, has over exceeded every uh, commitment that we've made to the city with regard to uh, jobs. Um, currently we're, we're uh, 925 some employees at RMS company and, and we're proposing to add uh, another 80 jobs and these are, these are jobs that are very desirable really everywhere in the world. They, they, they're high tech, they're high pay, we provide very good benefits. I think we're a, a, a great corporate citizen. Our, our, our employees do a lot of uh, volunteer work in, in the city. Um, you know, we're proud to be a part of Coon Rapids. We are absolutely thrilled to have you, Lee, and you're still one of the one of the jewels I always talk about. Our and our largest private employer in town, RMS, you know, and I think I've toured it three times now, and uh, it, it's it's a phenomenal operation. It just 
it's just amazing. Yeah, yeah. thank you. Yeah, we've got uh, yeah, hundreds of very talented people there. And like I said, we're, uh, you know, it, it's been a, a very good relationship uh, these 27 years. Um, we're, we're proud to be in your community and, and hopefully uh, you're proud to have us. And how many Swiss lathes do you have there, do you think? Hundreds. <laughs> <laughs> hundreds. Probably, yeah. Yeah, we have uh, close to 600 CNC machining centers under that roof. It's, so. Yeah. It's it's yeah. it's phenomenal, and and the, and the stuff they machine, you know, it's, it's from everything. Yeah. Right. Then you do you have the ortho machine that does all the multi, plant the multi parts and. Yep, we've got yeah, lots of new stuff to show you if you want to come by and visit. Okay, Mr. Brown, Mr. Fernelius. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's maybe when maybe when they get the next edition done. Yeah. I mean, assuming this approves. <laughs> you know. <laughs> Councilmember Johnson? I would like to move adoption of resolution 19-62 supporting a job creation fund application for RMS company. Second. Motion by Johnson, second by Wells. Discussion? Your Honor. Councilmember Johnson? So when I was reading this, of course we all know RMS and we're all uh, grateful that you employ so many people here and you're expanding and doing great work. There's one thing I didn't like in here. It says this. A subsidiary of Cretex Companies Inc. based in Elk River. <laughs> well, that's correct. Yeah. Yeah. Boy, I wish that said Coon Rapids. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe that's something we can work out yeah. in the future. We have a lot more employees than they do. Uh, I know. <laughs> that's the corporate I know, office. I know. <laughs> it's not like it's a I know. <laughs> so. All right. Any other discussion? Hearing none, all in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? And that motion carries. Very good. Thank you for your support. Thank you, Thank you. Thank you, Lee. Thank you for coming in. Item 12, consider a joint powers agreement amendment for the Coon Creek Watershed District Woodcrest Creek Iron Enhanced Sand Filter Project. Should I read the talking points or Mr. Hammer, you want to hit the highlights? Briefly, um, there's because of the different types of grants uh, that were involved, it got a little complicated in the legal language. So the watershed just said, we'll pull back one of the funding sources and we'll plug that in utilizing our dollars. That's really the extent of this revision. Um, less money for a grant, more money from the watershed, no change for the city. The project still is the same as we previously discussed, but I'm happy to answer any questions. Questions? All right. So we want to make a motion. Your Honor. Council Member Kicker. I make a motion that the Council approve the amendment to the Joint Powers Agreement with Coon Creek Watershed District for the implementation of the Woodcrest Creek Iron Enhanced Sand Filter Project. I'll second that. Motion by Kicker, second by Johnson. Discussion? Um, Mr. Hammer. This improves the quality of the water, correct? correct. Removes the iron. Correct. And, and E. coli, bacteria. And this water goes back into the ground or this water goes somewhere else? This water flows west under the railroad tracks and ultimately into Coon Creek. And ultimately into the Mississippi River. And ultimately into the Mississippi River. Okay. I was just, I was just curious about it because I was at the Mississippi Legislative coalition or whatever that group is this morning and I mean it's it's just amazing it's you know the 90 towns up and down and all the things going on and the river basin and everything that feeds it and and I was thinking about this project when I was sitting there and I was wondering how many other communities should be doing things like this but all right we have a motion and we have a second discussion hearing none all in favor signify by saying aye aye, aye. opposed and that motion carries Item 13, consider resolution 19-63, requesting conveyance of tax forfeit properties, Port Riverwalk. And Mr. Brown, we've had a little change since the original packet went out. Yes, Your Honor, I'll just note that uh, a revised resolution was distributed to you just before the meeting. After some further investigation, we concluded that we really only need two of the four lots that were listed in that resolution. So that's lots six and nine. Uh, so I ask that you adopt that uh, version. Basically, this this uh, involves correcting one of the main, many title issues uh, related to the Port Riverwalk redevelopment project as we uh, scramble to close on that. 
will likely be vacating some roadway easements over the o over that area uh, as well as we solidify the ultimate right of way of Coon Rapids Boulevard in that location. All right, very good. Your Honor. House Member Johnson. I'll move adoption of the new resolution 19-63 requesting the conveyance of tax forfeit properties in particular relating to lot six, block three, Coon Grove, Anoka County, Minnesota, and Lot 9, Block 3, Coon Grove, Anoka County, Minnesota, with corresponding PIN numbers. Second. Motion by Johnson, second by Wells. Discussion? Mr. Mayor. House Member Gruskoviak. Actually, I did have a question on this point, and I didn't actually see the update until you read it just now, but the other two parcels are retained by the city? Those, those parcels, the Underlying ownership is actually the state of Minnesota since uh, they had gone tax forfeit. It's, it's a really odd situation in that there are currently roadway easements. Uh, the city and the county have roadway easements over the entirety of these parcels, uh, but the underlying fee ownership have been a different party who at one point in time stopped paying taxes, so they reverted to the state of Minnesota. Okay, and then a follow-up question was, is Centra planning to develop on either one of those because I thought they were gonna leave those alone those were some of the ones that they weren't going to develop yes this this area and these two lots are are relatively small mm -hmm. uh, but yes the area of these two lots would be included in in Centra's final plat or at and least that's that's the hope and it would uh, provide some additional space on some of those uh, lots that are proposed okay that's it thank you all right, any other discussion? We had a motion and a second then, yep. didn't we? Yes, we did. Okay. Any other discussion? Hearing none, all in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? And that motion passes. And we are on to item 14. Consider <laughs> accepting the 2018 annual financial statement. Um, the city council held a work session this, uh, this evening. June 18th to review the 2018 annual financial statement with the city's external auditors, Malloy, Montague, Karnowski, Radizovich, maybe, and company, um, PAMMKR, certified public accountants, um, and once approved, an electronic copy of this statement will be made available on the city's website. And does anybody have anything they need to add to that? Ms. Hanson, Mr. Stemwettle, anybody? No, we're all good. I think it was golden. All right. Your Honor. Also, Member Kicker. Uh, I make a motion that the City Council accept the 2018 annual financial statement. Second. Motion by Kicker, second by Geisler. Discussion? Any chance of getting City Council credit in that line, you know, <laughs> or, you know, that we also want Coon Rapids Boulevard to do well? Sure. Okay. All right. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like, well, the three people that read that, I want them. <laughs> all right. Uh, hearing no more further discussion, all in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? And that motion carries. And that was kudos to our finance department. It's always nice to hear those auditors talk about glowingly how wonderful you are to work with and how everything was in line and everything was in order and um, and to this, this, the rest of the department heads that the finance financially were doing really well thanks to uh, a, steady had, a, st a steady hand at the tiller. Is that what you want to hear tonight in your review? <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. All right. So that we are now on to item 15. Consider resolution number 19-64, providing for the sale of $6,840,000 in general obligation improvement and utility bonds, series 2019A. Um, let's see, this will finance the city's share of the following projects, city project 19-1, 19-2, and 19-3 street construction, um, and since the above projects will also replace water mains in the project areas, water revenue bonds in the amount of $3,025,000 uh, $3 are also being proposed. 
Both of the issues will be repaid over 10 years. The tax levy and special assessments will be required to repay the improvement bonds and water revenues will repay the water revenue bonds. Mr. Mayor. Councilmember Geisler. I'd like to make a motion to authorize resolution 19-64 providing for the sale of $6,840,000 general obligation improvement and utility bonds, series 2019A. Second. Motion by Geisler and a second by Kicker. Discussion? Quiet down on that end. Quiet. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to go with it then. All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Trust me. Uh, I know that our city is in, a, in great uh, shape because of the review that we just had, so I'm sure that the bonds, are, we're going to get a really great yield on these, right? Good rate. <laughs> so that was an aye? That's an aye. Okay, all right. <laughs> so that motion carries yeah. unanimously. I'm an aye, too. I'm an aye too. All right. Um... Did we vote? Yeah. 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 Okay. You got mixed in there. You, you were as long as I was on the topic or something, and yeah. But I think it already called for it. So. Okay. We good, Mr. Brody? Can we can we get those bonds? All right. We are at the open mic public comment portion of the of the <laughs> meeting, but apparently we're not that interesting. So now we are on to reports on previous open mics, and I don't have any of those here. And we are on other business. Council? Uh, Your Honor. Who said that? Oh, no. Council Member. <laughs> <laughs> Who is that? Matt, Council Matt Member Demmer. I <laughs> uh, just wanted to thank the uh, staff for being able to put this uh, virtual meeting together. Um, certainly not the first choice. First choice, obviously, being there. But I had to be out of town for work. And, and I really appreciate that they were able to patch me in. So Council Member Demmer, they had to publicly post the address because it's an open a public meeting. Do you have anybody there with you watching you or? You know, funny enough, there's uh, a different group holding a public meeting in this same lobby. So I, I guess we're all in this together. Oh. <laughs> right. He's not alone. He's not alone. All right. Mr. Mayor? Well, yes. I have one, one thing. Um, we have a new website. And so if you haven't been to the coonrapidsminnesota.gov lately, go check it out. I mean, still a lot of great information there and kudos to um, the staff for the new look, feel, and navigation. I think it um, should be very successful and it looks fabulous. Absolutely. If you get there and it looks the same, hit Control F5 <laughs> in case your cache is holding the old one. <laughs> Um, yeah, no, it looks real, very user friendly. Um, other business, Mr. Anderson, is it finally drying out on the golf course? Mayor Council, the golf course is bustling. I'm happy to say that, and that's thanks to quite a bit of good weather. Not all perfect weather, but we'll take pretty much all good. Um, but it's been busy, um, you know, highlighted by last week's state high school championships, which were very exciting, and a, and a couple thousand visitors uh, to Bunker Hill's spectators. Chan Hassan was the girls champion, and I believe he died in the boys champion. So a lot of good competition uh, and a very fun event. Today we hosted the uh, Anoka Ramsey's foundation event, their golf event, which was great. They had a perfect day for it. And our junior golf program has begun with junior league uh, junior instruction series. It's always great to have the kids out of school, back to Bunker Hills, where I think they belong. Um, <laughs> because you that's know, where you grew up. School, <laughs> when they're not in school. Uh, so so it's, it's really great to, to just be that community place where kids can gather and come and have a good time as well. And, and both patios are open and, and things are good. So I know the weather forecast isn't perfect moving forward here this week, so uh, keep our fingers crossed for some great weather moving through the weekend. Excellent. Thank you. Uh, Let's remember, guys. I mean, we we've started rec on the spot, so th there's a, you know, we had some today, but there's tomorrow. You can go to Prairie Oaks Park or Pheasant Ridge Park or Sand Creek Park, and um, Thursday is Woodcrest Park and Peppermint Stick Park and Boulevard Plaza, along with Thursday nights we have the concert series, um, and so that's coming up for Everett Smithson Band, which is blues. And then uh, next week, Tuesday, we have our meetings in the park. 
And so hopefully that one won't get rained out. Is that one at Riverwind? Yeah. Yes. Riverwind, yeah. yeah, that'll be a really nice one. It's gonna, yeah. be, it's gonna be fun to, sh will we be able to show off the building or will, is it already rented that night? Oh, very good. All right. Any other business to come before council this evening? Chief Wise, do you got something or you just want to leave? No, I'm just posturing. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Please get me out of here. Yeah. <laughs> leaving for the door. <laughs> <laughs> I'll make a motion to adjourn. Second. Motion by Wells, second by Kicker to adjourn. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 We are adjourned. Aye.